about three years ago, I guess it was, the Philosophy Club had a uh, panel discussion on uh, ch children in sports. Uh, I when I was head of the department, we used to do that a lot. Uh, my philosophy club would be running these panel discussions. The public was always invited. They used to look forward to coming in and talking about those things. Uh, and they asked me to be one of the presenters. We had um, four faculty members to talk about children in sports. And what was it like for children today to play and organize sports. I'm not too sure what prompted that title for the students, but um, it may have been angry soccer parents screaming at a match or whatever, but I wanted to do something different. I, I didn't want to uh, give a talk, uh, so I wrote a story. I wrote, wrote a story about five boys growing up in a uh, small river town not far from here and they formed their own baseball team. They were young teenagers, just on the cusp of teen years, and how they organized the team themselves. The parents didn't even know they had a team. And these five boys um, collected old newspapers and sold them. Uh, they washed cars. They bought bats and balls with their own money and they organized their whole league. And I had a lot of funny stories in there that were true. And it went over really well. The students really loved it. The, the questioning period overwhelmed me. They're saying, oh, Dr. Romano, I'm glad you told us that story. You know, I tell you, I used to hate when my father came to watch me play. <laughs> so it, it, it touched a nerve with them. So I had retired in 2013, and I had a little more time, and it just come pouring out of me. I followed those five boys to school, to the movies, to the, um, the religious services that I had to attend. Uh, they met girls in the teen years. They, learned about mortality when they first realized that when their pets died that uh, maybe we're all mortal. I have like philosophical lessons throughout the story in a lighter vein. Sometimes it gets a little heavy, but uh, I trace them all through adulthood. Uh, they thought they would never play softball. No, that was a uh, counterfeit form of baseball. But here they were playing softball when they're in their 30s and 40s in the church league. And then there they are as grandfathers watching their grandkids playing little league baseball with the real uniforms and real dugout that they never had. But the point of that chapter is that uh, it, it, it was the same game. And the life that these boys lived, in spite of the generational differences, was the same life. The same hopes, the same fears, the same aspirations. Basically, we humans face the same thing. And these five boys face life and learn that way. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but Tom Brokaw, the famous uh, newscaster, he's retired now, he wrote a book called The Greatest Generation. And that greatest generation were the people who fought in World War II and people who fought and lived through the Great Depression. My story was the second greatest generation. We lived through the same problems that our parents lived through, but we did not have a direct say. But we felt all the tension, all the anxiety, all the fear of our, of our parents. And uh, that it wasn't, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But we le learned a lot of life's lessons that way. It's a very simple title, Reds. Reds was the name of our natural leader, 
Reds was about six months older than all the rest of the boys. And he was the one that organized us. Nobody taught him how to do that. Nobody taught us how to play baseball. We learned the game by playing the game. 